It is time to get tied on. We are off and running. Little Friday edition of Gulfstream today here from our paddock studios at beautiful Gulfstream Park. Ron Nicoletti, Jason Blood alongside. Delighted to have you with us. Belmont Stakes Eve. This is the place to be. Get social, my friend, at sunset. Yeah, and you're just joining us. We got our first post today at 2.15 p.m. each and every Friday through September and uh, lots of good things going on. Oh, it is an action-packed Friday for sure. They're already up and running at beautiful Belmont Park. In fact, uh, an upset. Big prices uh, stealing basically the trifecta in their uh, Belmont Stakes Eve opener and of course here locally at Gulfstream Park. Give us a follow. Twitter, you and I, Acacia, we're all on Twitter, tracking out some Pete Aiello. Follow Gulfstream Park over on our Facebook page because that is the spot and place where to sign up for the Beat the Expert. I am up. We've been hemorrhaging again. <laughs> that is the word of uh, Gulfstream today. I mean, these, these uh, Gulfstream Beat the Expert polos, which if you pick more winners than me today, and you sign up by the uh, first race post to 215, you'll get one of those sweet polos. They've been going like proverbial hotcakes. I will try to finally come out on top Beat the expert. I'm up, Ronnie. We call it the beat the expert curse. Uh, those yeah. particular days, we have a uh, couple of winners, and then usually the next day we do well. So it's a lot of fun, and as you mentioned. And the cool thing about it says beat the expert right on the sleeve. So a chance to win one of those, and uh, got a lot of good action going on today. Food and drink specials this afternoon, horse racing, bingo. And the losing ticket drawing. Yeah, Silks, the breezeway. In fact, just about every inch of this state-of-the-art facility and racing mecca in Hallandale Beach is the perfect spot to spend your sunset twilight Friday on track with us at Gulfstream Park. And just as a friendly reminder, we do have advanced wagering on the entire Belmont Stakes Day program. I think it's Belmont Stakes 149. You can bet the entire 13-race card, including the test of the champion, the 2017 Belmont Stakes here at Gulfstream, Friday, June the 9th. Yeah, we got a couple of crossover doubles in Belmont Park today. You can bet the uh, the New York along with the Met Mile tomorrow. That's races 9 today and 9 tomorrow for that one. And also you can bet the Gold Cup today, race 10, with the Belmont Stakes, and that's 10 and 11. So if you want to bet both days, now's your chance to do it. And that is one long rolling <laughs> double. The Belmont Gold Cup at two miles, followed by the mile and a half of Belmont Stakes. So some good stuff there will be, of course, a tuning in to watch the stakes races a bit later on today at beautiful Belmont Park. And speaking of stakes, we've got one ourselves, and I think somewhat fitting considering this is Belmont weekend, that our stake today, our featured eighth, in fact, is restricted to three-year-olds. And Tyler Gaffleyon, before he hops on a plane and heads north for the big festivities and rides a couple of long shots on the uh, program tomorrow at Belmont Park, he'll look to make it count later on today with a better factor for trainer Todd Pletcher, a horse who looks pretty good, caught by More Than Ready, who I think is going places. So let's get to it. The nitty-gritty here. We uh, have a big carryover in the Rainbow Six. Boy, oh boy, which we will show you in just a few seconds. As of now, the uh, dollar rolling super high five begins with the Friday first race. We do have a main track only still enter. The eight horse on the outside. Obviously, if the uh, race stays on the turf, that horse has to come out. If that's the case, I believe the super high five, Ronnie, will kick off in the third. Yeah, kick off in the third race. And the reasoning, you need seven or more horses in any race to have the rolling super high five and if they scratch the eight what they're supposed to if we're staying on the turf this afternoon turf listed is good except for the last race will be on the main track we'll talk about that uh you got a chance to uh, get that rolling super high five in race three today and in race number one in fact the early pick five as well i will give out my daily the first of two losing tickets which has become a rite of passage each and every edition of gulfstream today and then we build into that big crescendo seven hundred sixty thousand and change by my count ron on April 9th for a $90,000 plus payout was the last single six out of six jackpot winner of the Rainbow Six. This thing has been going for quite a while, and boy, oh boy, it just makes every day here at Gulfstream Park that much better. And if we get through today, it is going to be skyrocketing tomorrow on our 12 race card along with the Belmont card. So, uh, And then uh, Jason will be giving you a winning late pick five ticket this afternoon. i got a good feeling. Yeah, don't hold your breath. We'll <laughs> see. In fact, let's get on to the first loser of the afternoon. <laughs> 
Keeping my fingers crossed, we'll try to get lucky in uh, Friday's uh, early pick five. And maybe the best news of all, in fact, as for the time being, things have cleared up in South Florida. We're getting some turf racing in today. The grass listed is good, and that's the start and sight of race number one today. And I'll use the two inside runners, the one Cajun Queen and the number two Arthemisa. Two horse spread each and every leg down to race number five, in which I think, once again, Tyler Gaffleon could have a big afternoon. I really like the effort in defeat last time for the four entangled. If no one takes a step forward, that horse is supposed to win today's fifth at a very short price. So just an $8 play to start things out. Let's get into the uh, two inside runners that I have, Ron, in the early pick five. In this first race, which for the record, three and up Philly and Mare, $16,000 optional claimer. This is the first of four turf races on the card. I don't think we've had a grass race here at GP since last Sunday because of all the, the wet weather and the rain that we've had. And just to note, all the races today they will be run at 120 feet with the rail setting. Yeah, that's our outside uh, turf course, and it's, uh, you know, that's where it is okay to run. They got it listed as good, and as I mentioned at the top of the show, race number nine today will not be on the turf, so when you put your Rainbow Six ticket together, mm -hmm. remember the last race will be run at seven furlongs on the main track, so just make sure you jot that down. One, two, buckle my shoe. It's <laughs> as easy as that. The old one, two, five for Ron and I. In fact, a cold super, one, two, five, six to the hoop Arthemisa let's backtrack little spotlight now this this race we're going to show you is two starts ago on May the 7th where this horse this filly by broken vow was basically an outside speed the white cap she takes the lead off the quarter pole and you want to talk about the definition of saved by the wire I think that is a more than fitting suggestion and sort of wrap up to this race where she just holds off Barely the cavalry charge. Yeah, and they stand a nice performance, gutsy performance there. They stepped her up off that performance and put her in the Christmas past. And uh, might have been a little bit tough for her, but you look, she was far back. She only ended up getting feet four lengths in there. So she really classes up nicely in the first race. And speaking of class, and maybe you got a case of uh, trainer Herman uh, Walensky, who uh, clearly trains a very modest stable concerning the number size, but maybe he scored one with the one Cajun queen with the claim for 16,000 three starts ago and was a bit bit of uh, ahead of the curve there considering she's won two in a row and is very tractable. Yeah, she's winning. Uh, she's wheeling back at that same level and this as you mentioned her second consecutive victory since moving to Herman's Bond as Tyler Gaffleone, a leading jock in the saddle this afternoon. So lots to like with the one both of us having on the top of the ticket for that reason. Yeah, inside post uh, for me in uh, race number one. You like the uh, one, five, two, and three for the first. Did those numbers change? By the way, what do you have in the first? I yeah. have one five, two, and, and three. three. All right, good. I thought we both had one, two, five, six a few moments ago, but maybe that's just me. One, five, two, three for the man next to me. One, two, five, six uh, for myself as we start the action. Let's get on to race number two. Five eights on the dirt. These are two-year-old filly, $25,000 made in claimers. Field of six set to go. Five firsters, one with experience, the number three, Karenina, a uh, skip shot filly who was uh, a big price against a better field first time out. And you don't have much to go on here outside of, I think, to an extent pedigree, but even more so than that, trainer intent. And uh, we've seen it time and time again that Kathleen O'Connell doesn't mess around. She can get one ready and properly spot a horse where it quite simply belongs, and I think we're getting that with the four, our gracious girl. Yeah, gracious girl. It's a daughter of Machu Uno, half-sister to a uh, stakes place horse called El Enhance, debuting for Kathleen O'Connell. Let's show you a statistic on Kathleen over the last five years with two-year-old first-time starters, maiden claiming uh, 13 for 72, 18% nice sample side, 36% uh, in the money with a positive return of investment of $2.53. And if you spend any time in South Florida over the years, you know just how good Kathleen O'Connell does with her two-year-old first-time starter. So uh, off that, on top of my ticket, and I believe you had it on top of yeah, yours. Yeah, and we're far out, of course, from race one at about 2.15. I mean, looking at the doubles, you kind of expected the four, our gracious girl, and the five, two-timing girl to take the most uh, play here, the, uh, the girl power exactly if you will, and judging from the early doubles, they're both sitting at $80 uh, with the uh, number six in the first race. They look like they'll be the two favorites, and then you get Larry Pilati, is my point, with two timing girl. Good connections and clearly a win early pedigree. Yeah, again, a 
17%, excuse me, with winning first out this sire, but uh, I just wasn't enamored with the workout pattern in the morning, so I, I like the four a little bit better than the five, but I always respect what Larry Pilate does. Yeah, Larry Pilate, good trainer. In the meantime, our gracious girl making the van ride over from GPW, trading over that deep main track across town, about eight miles or so. On to the third, a little more turf action coming your way on this Sunset Friday. Seven and a half furlongs on the grass, again, 120 uh, feet out from that inside rail. They're on the outer course. Three and up. Philly and Mare, $30,000 to $25,000 claimers set to go. Field of seven at least entered in the body. There was an MTO in the eight. Helen Virginia also entered in the race. And again, we'll see what Mother Nature does throughout the afternoon in Hallandale Beach. Let's talk about the last out race for the one fashion factor. Race looks okay on paper. I'm curious to hear what you have to say about her because judging from her last, I think it's a race in which she didn't run all that well. We'll go back on May 20th. Uh, short Comet steadied along inside. I get watching races is very subjective. I thought Amiciel Jaramillo just had a very hard hold of her. I just didn't know how much steadying there was early on with the one fashion factor. Yeah, you know, cutting back to seven and a half furlongs today, broke from the rail, dropped into the condition claiming ranks. She's so the two, by the way, yeah, with the black right, cat right. Midwest uh, so there. Yeah, and you know, finished fourth, and it was, I thought it was a well-graded $35,000 option claimer going to mile at Samando de la Cerda. And more importantly about the trouble call, I just thought this is a good spot for this horse. Might just be, and you see that just sort of grabbing a hole, trying to get her to settle down and rate in the uh, in the pocket. Sort of almost reminds me of Jose Santos back in the day where he was just so strong and could hold the horse for just so long before getting them to uh, kick on through the final couple of furlongs. And there you see, ultimately, I didn't think there was much of an excuse early on for the one fashion factor where she saved ground, was able to settle eventually, and just was out kicked and out punched to the wire. And I think she's got a real rival in the three, Hottie Toddy, who clearly you think that is the case as well, putting her second, where she is just making her second start off the layoff. And for a horse or on a horse for horse basis, I think she's just coming out of a tougher race here on May the 12th. I, I believe she's sitting on a winning performance. She returned from that layoff. I think she finished six, but she was beaten less than two lengths that afternoon, and that was a 16 optional claimer going to mile. It's Ralph Nix, who's in the saddle, Tyler Gaffneon. So I thought these were the logical two in there. Fashion fact, in my estimation, was a little in a little tougher last time out, and mm -hmm. I never even mentioned the trouble in that race. I didn't see it as yeah, trouble right. in there. Mm -hmm. Just thought it was a good spot for them. Would I box them up an exacta? Absolutely. Yeah, no, 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 no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, even Bitta Cora came back and was fourth in that aforementioned uh, Christmas party. Right. And she was running against right. older horses as a three year old filly. An easier race all around for, I think, Fashion Factor and Hottie Toddy. It's pretty obvious there. And we like the two favorites. Let's take a little time out. There's plenty of Rainbow Six action coming up your way, including a lot of green at the end of that rainbow. 700K plus, Ron's ticket and more on the other side of this break. At Express Bet, we celebrate the champions that make horse racing great. That's why we provide more ways to bet from more places than ever. We've built an entire family of brands to give players more of the rewards they deserve, give bettors the information they need to win, and provide a community for horse bettors. Because the best way to support the champions of horse racing is to champion horse racing. Express Bet. We are racing. Welcome back. Live Friday edition on this Belmont Stakes Eve of Gulfstream today. Joining you once again from our paddock studios at Gulfstream Park, Ron and Jason. Down the stretch we go. In fact, it's time for Rainbow Six Talk. Race number four kicks off the sequence. What's the play looking like? Well, mine is $43.20 today, and it went three deep in here. Oh, with a cheapy today. Yeah, yeah, one, two. Well, like I found my single this Finally. afternoon. Race number six, and that is sound value. So I was able to find when you see the rest of the progression as they go down. If I had to do it over and I wanted to spend more money, I might go all in this race because I find that we have a couple of scratches in this race. And, and I just thought these were the logical three when the smoke cleared. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, need that number seven horse in the six to win it. And uh, $43.20. And I got a good feeling about this one today. I do as well. And you know what? I can make that ticket even cheaper. I think you could single the five 
Kanani here in race number four. I think her last race, and I get she was second at six to five, and she's starting to have a look of a horse who's had a lot of chances with one narrow defeat after another. But let's go back May 21st via our spotlight here and the boys upstairs. They've got her highlighted. She ultimately, I thought, made up a significant amount of ground over a track that was just very kind to inside speed and was essentially enervating horses who had the rail. In the case here, Nico's on the run, who looked like she was in trouble turning for home, and you see her just spurred and clear. Yeah, just spurred and clear, and there comes uh, the one horse on the outside. Almost gets there and uh, going against the bias, as Jason mentioned. Yeah, that's what I like about the 5K Nane. You want the other logical contender, and this might ultimately be a race when it's all said and done. You might have a tough time getting a little cute with some of the bigger-priced horses in here, and uh, I have a feeling the public, at least off paper, will single in on K Nane and uh, the one Geopolitical, who you get a nice one-two punch, I think, because Geopolitical is the one that has the speed. Yeah, you know, stretching out to one turn mile after using that tactical speed to hit the board in four consecutive sprints against this same caliber of competition. It is a son of Geoponte, certainly bred to respond favorably to the added distance this afternoon, and that was my thinking in there. These were the logical two, and I threw the two horse in there, a uh, brass badge, just, uh, you know, I don't want to get knocked out in the first leg, so... Uh, I wasn't really enamored with any horse, so mm -hmm. I figured I'd go three deep in the open. Well, I got to tell you, Brass Badge, to me, might be the most interesting horse on the card, and not because of his races or anything like that. He's a Tennessee bred by Badge. You remember Badge, <laughs> I New remember York horse? Ba yes, I remember Do you remember Badge. who trained him? Uh, no, not really. The late, great Joe Aquilino. That's right. My buddy Joe, and I yeah. remember uh, we're looking at him in his barn up at Saratoga there because he also, uh, Joe Eccolino trained for my cousin Tom Miner. Oh, so that's yeah. How we, well, he, he probably at the time had that good sprinter for your uh, yeah. cousin. What was that, that New York bread? I think uh, he was by Lee D. Justice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll come to me. Yeah. Yeah, it'll come to me. It ain't going to come to you. But, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll come to me, though. We'll try to get you that that little uh, trivia question answer a bit later. But always nice to uh, think of Joe Aquilino. Passed away yeah. a couple of years ago. Retired uh, New York City firefighter who took over the training game and uh, won a lot of races up in the Big Apple. On to race number five, let's uh, do it here. A two-turn mile on the turf. These are three and up. Florida bred made in special eight runners. A $36,000 purse. And uh, we get back to my single in what I hope will find finally be a winning early pick five play the four entangled who you're picking against today i think there's a lot to like with entangled and not to sound like a broken record i think this horse is coming out of a day as you can see this horse was the anchor in my early pick five and will be the anchor in my late pick five i think entangled who also uh, will play part as the first of two tyler gaffley owned singles in that late five worth 18 dollars for the 50 cent play i thought he ran really well over a track that once again have haven't been many bias days, but May 12th and 21st, in my estimation, were days you wanted inside speed, and he, of course, was up against it, trying to rally from out of it. Well, trained by Ralph Nix, so let's show you a stat over the last five years. First time turf, made in special weight. Oh, we got a highlight going here. Yeah, I we got the spotlight oh, going, and you can watch Entangled fall just, and this horse was very determined. I was very impressed with the losing effort out of this horse. You can see him just digging in and, and finishing just so resolutely to the outside of the one blinding, who, again, I just think on that particular day isn't as good as Entangle, but got the race flow and got the better portion or the more liver portion, if you will, of the main track on May 12th. And here we have trainer Ralph Nix. This actually... I don't like in this spot. Well, this is a, a, a good stat worth pointing out. Yeah, and this is where I'm playing devil's advocate, and you saw me try and jump the gun with this one, and that was a two for 29. Oh, we only 7% win average with first turf, made in special weight, 28% in the money, and only uh, just over a 50 cent return of investment. So uh, uh, just something that you want to take uh, into consideration yep. because Ralph Nix, it, without a doubt, is one of the best trainers on the ground. Oh, very no talented that, horseman. So. Oh, no question about it. Former uh, jockey, uh, turned a uh, longtime assistant, I believe. Trainer Bill Mott. I mean, he's really worked around or worked under before going out on his own. Some of the uh, the best horsemen around. Uh, so you've got the turf debut of the four entangled. You don't have a grass debut for your top pick, who's already respectively run three times and run very well on the grass. Well, you know, he's a sharp second at this distance against state bred competition. That was two starts back. He turns back. They're going to add blinkers this afternoon after finishing fifth. That was against open special weight runners going a mile in the 16th last out. And, and I just went with that proven.
proven commodity angle in there. I got entangled, of course, on the ticket, but I like Dope or Love Ordo on top of my ticket this afternoon. No Todd Pletcher for him to face today <laughs> in this spot. Ran one, two. The Pletcher horses did most recently against your top selection. He does not face that kind of firepower as he gets the blinkers on. Sixth race on the program as we uh, head back to the main track. Six furlongs. He's a three and up. $35,000 made in claimers. You can scratch the uh, number two a Boy Scout. And uh, speaking of firepower and heavy artillery, I like the horses towards the outside. Number seven, Sound Values. The eight, Dude Scepter. And the nine, Player's Luck. And I'm just going to keep rolling the dice here with trainer Ralph Zadie. I uh, got lucky the other day. Paid about 35 bucks or so, 33 uh, bucks pick. late in the, yeah. And just again, a, uh, a stab for no other reason than you've got a trainer here batting about 40% at the meet. And for my money in this day and age, there, there are many factors that matter, but the trainer, at least as far as handicapping goes, that is number one, and that's why I'm taking the nine players' luck. Well, as you mentioned, when you saw my uh, Rainbow Six ticket, I had a single in here, and that was the seven sound values. Drop it to this level today of 35,000. Returned from an extensive layoff. Stalk to pace, finished third at this distance against special weight competition. Angel Rodriguez talking about a bond that's going good. Tyler Gaffney, I want to show you a stat on Angel Rodriguez over the last five years with dirt made in special weight. To Maiden claiming with that drop, two for seven, a limited sampling, 29%, 43% in the money, and just about an even, $1.97 return of investment. And they bet everything this guy runs, so I think $1.97 is pretty good. Yeah. A and I agree with you with players luck, as you mentioned, Ralph Zaidi, MCL Jaramillo, lots to like there, but I had to get a single somewhere, and I split those two horses with an inside horse, and that's Blind Ruckus. Yeah, Blind Ruckus, who's had a lot of chances, but if you can get by that, or at least they're looking for a horse, to finish second, third, or fourth, exact or tries and supers. That's a horse that has been running consistently good and likes to pick up checks. Yeah, you know, we turned from that two-mile freshening, dropped to this level, and he was second. So why not? He's only beaten a length and a quarter in that race. So the three, I know you like the outside. I thought maybe this horse, well, you got him on your ticket. Got him too. in there. Got, got him, him in, in the there. mix. Certainly yeah. has a chance. If one of those horses uh, doesn't fire towards the outside, and in a way, you are guessing with the Knicks second-time starter, and even with my Zadie horse, who hasn't been out in over a year, there's some guesswork involved. Uh, certainly, you're getting some recent good form uh, with the number three blind ruckus moving on to race number seven today this will go as our final turf race on the card my own a 16th these are three and up thirty-five thousand dollars starter allowance runners and a couple of spotlights to bring you in this one beginning with the collective wisdom who uh, getting back to trainer ralph nicks think he's got a horse who is just finally found a groove. We'll backtrack to his uh, effort two back on March 31st when he decimated a group of maiden 25 horses. I had fooled around with him. If you remember, Ron, last time out, my feeling was he wasn't dropping back down even after this win. So maybe Ralph thinks he's finally got him healthy and sharp. Yeah, you know, he's hoping to throttle down that keen early interest, as you see right there. He opened that five and a half length lead. He settled for six and it was against state bred 16 optional claimers going a mile. Speeded is always dangerous here, especially on the turf course when you're out there at that 120 feet marker. And I think this is a logical contender in there. And uh, certainly I got him on uh, second on my ticket, but I would not. Uh, you know, you got him single, I believe, in this one, do you? Uh, did not, no, oh, no, did no. not, did not single this horse. I don't think uh, uh, singling might be a dicey proposition <laughs> here in the seventh. It really appears to be an evenly matched field. And as far as being evenly matched, there isn't a heck of a lot in the ability department between the seven love conquers and the number six more alex who when they faced each other last time out on uh, may the 12th it was love conquers who had an easy trip on the front end we'll pick this one up the guys upstairs have love conquers down on the rail highlighted more alex put in that uh, tough tough luck chasing trip chasing hard from the get-go outside and could not wear down or get close to love conquers do you like one of these horses out of this race? I, I did not have them, you know, uh, prominently placed on my ticket. I have the horse that you have in second on top of my ticket, and that's the two, General Magoobi. But it, this is a good, uh, you know, good thing to go back and backtrack. And you see that's on the outside part of the turf course as they ran that day. Now, as far as uh, the uh, pace in this race and your your point in leaving them out, I'm assuming uh, perhaps the uh, the main reason was maybe the pace is a little different uh, this time around. Love Conquers is probably not going to be able to just slow it down 
down in a short field like he was back on that uh, that race day of May the 12th. And uh, he's likely to have a bit more company up front, specifically from the four collective wisdom. All that being said, and getting at least a lively or honest pace, I think that just plays to the strengths and into the hand of General Magooby. General Magooby and also Mr. Magic. I think Mr. Magic ends up setting the trip up. We'll talk about General Magooby, I guess that's his name. Dropping into the starter allowance ranks, he finished second in the $75,000 English Channel here last time out, and second in the $100,000 sophomore turf at Tampa two starts back. Lily Curtinez, Gilbert Tremafi, son of General Court. Gilbert Tremafi, a real strong rider. We've been watching the last couple of days, mm -hmm. and I, I think that he sits the trip along. I, and I had to mention Mr. Magic. For, for, she wrote the pace scenario up. He does his best running from that stalking position. So I think these are the logical three in there, and we're certainly in agreement. Oh, with yeah. Him. I think it's the way the race is going to set up. No question. Major players, General McGooby. We learned who Barry Carafin <laughs> is. We're still waiting on Taco Wayne shot or Taco Wayne, and we got to find out who General McGooby is. But no doubt they are major your players and must use would you follow in a movie into war i don't think i would would you <laughs> no you're my general you're the only one i'm following in the war my friend race number eight little featured eighth on this uh, sunset friday and as i say that we got a nice breeze here yeah. in the backyard of gulf stream and the sun is actually making an appearance in hallandale beach and again somewhat fitting this one for three-year-olds on a weekend they will run the belmont stakes for the 149th time it is the fifty thousand dollar ocala flame and will this be for benefactor? Is this a, uh, a better factor cause for Todd Pletcher and Tyler Gaffleone? I don't think you need to send out the uh, collection plate for those <laughs> two, but they have a uh, Colt by More Than Ready named Benefactor who we are uh, both expecting, and I think most people are expecting good things of today. Yeah, I mean, he's a $425,000 son of More Than Ready. He's stepping up. He faces winner, winners. He responded for the, from the switch to the turf, from the turf to the dirt with an impressive six-length maiden victory. Let's show you a stat on of Todd Pletcher over the last five years. Winner last out, second off the layup on the dirt. This is in non-graded stakes. Oh, he's just 11 for 40, 28%. He's in the money 65% of the time and at $1.77 ROI. You like either of uh, Todd's horses in the Belmont in Patch and or Taprit? No. No? I tap it, I might put on the bottom part no of my patch, ticket. Though. No patch, No patch. That patch is a good story. Yeah. Lovely story. And written by John Velasquez, we talked about this, absolutely one of my favorite people and, and riders that I, that I love. Yeah. I, I don't know. I did, you know, I got to see that. I'm Little gonna... Irish war cry. You're going back to your derby <laughs> pick? Oh, uh, you got him in second. You know, I'm going with the, the horse that was on the rail in the Kentucky Derby. I think is that, that looking at Lee? Looking at Lee. I think he closes and gets the job done in there today. Finally. Finally. I think that's his day. But uh, what a wide open what a great a betting race, and of course you can bet it right here today if you can't make it out here tomorrow. Yeah, the advanced wagering today on uh, tomorrow's entire 13 race uh, Belmont Stakes Day program. How about just for giggles, we'll get you the uh, the spotlight of uh, Benefactor as well, not to uh, belabor the point on a horse who is uh, probably going to be an underlaid and overbet favorite because of all the obvious reasons, but his maiden victory here on May 13th was a smart effort. Uh, only two have come out of that race who were in the wake of Benefactor factor and uh, one of those horses came back to break his maiden on the turf so you may be dealing with a uh, a colt who's coming out of a live race who's got the top connections in his corner the question is if he stubs his toe today or for whatever the reason just doesn't show up who are the main threats to Benefactor. I, I like the number two, Coronado, again, who's stretching out to this a distance of six and a half furlongs. He followed a really impressive score, and that was against 75 optional claimers who was back on May 12th. He comes back, he shows speed, he fades, he finished fourth, but it's against older horses, and it was in the $50,000 opening lead handicap. I think he's a major player against straight three-year-olds. Of course, you got Benefactor in there, but I just think Coronado, again, can be the sneaky in that race. I believe he's third choice on the morning. Line. I like Chatham for second. I think he uh, was against the track in that loss against Coronado again on May 12th. I still owe you uh, a brunch. From, uh, we, had our, right. we had our horse for horse bet in the uh, opening lead, Coronado again, and my horse was just behind yours, but I did lose a, a, a bet that day. Maybe <laughs> we'll get a horse for horse bet, Coronado again against Chatham, and double or nothing. I'll take you to brunch, Sunday brunch anytime, but I like 3 4 to the hoop. Ronnie's clearly in the 3 2. Well, the bet camp. is on, then. All right, you got it, my friend. I'll <laughs> even it up today in our uh, featured eighth race, and of course, all good things come to an end. We'll uh, wrap up the live racing action around 7 p.m. 
give or take. And uh, we're off the turf here for the nightcap. Seven furlongs on the dirt. Field of seven in race number nine. Three and up, 12-5 maiden claimers. Any way you slice it, I think you would be smart and wise to use as many as you can afford here playing any sort of multi-race gimmick. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mm -hmm. mouth. This is a wide open affair. And very important for people that are just betting Gulfstream for the first time or maybe not aware, when you go seven and a half on the turf, that's around two turns. Now it reverts to seven on the main track and that is a sprint, you know? Yeah. So uh, just so you know that in there. With that said, I stuck with the number 10 in here and you got it in second, Seeking Fast. Change Barnes, go to the Dennis Ward Barn via the claim. Uh, cuts back the seven furlongs on the dirt. He rallied to finish fourth, going a mile and a sixth on the turf. The barn is good first off the claim. I really couldn't find anybody else that uh, I thought was, you know, oh, this horse is definitely going to run well with the move to the main track. Yeah. So I kept the 10 on top of the 10. And that's the real sort of uh, fly in the ointment. It's the major question. Who can handle the dirt here in the last? And who can also do that going a very demanding one-turn distance of straight up seven furlongs? Uh, I certainly rep uh, respect your pick. I've got him second, the 10 seeking fast. I'm going to give a little shot to the two off the chain. And it's really only because of the layoff and the trainer change to Victor Barboza Jr. I do think, again, peace and love and not to knock anybody. I think this is a step up in the uh, training department. I like the move to the barn, and I'll take him as my best guess. He's certainly bred to like the dirt, being by Shackelford out of a street sense dam. Well, the exact reason I threw him on the, you know, the Superfecta ticket, and then, you know, maybe it's as easy as going a first time starter, you having fourth, I haven't second Gasparilla Trove debut for David Forks. Look at David Forks' record with first time starters. He's like 35%. Yeah. Might be as simple as that because a lot of horses have run not that well on the turf or the dirt. So this one might be the way to go, a first time starter. Yeah, David nearly had a first or made in claiming first to win on yesterday's card. Was a tough luck, very wide second. And we had talked about that stat. Uh, this is a guy that places his horses in spots where they're set up to succeed, not fail. A must use as the six, Gasparillo Trove in race number nine. And nine up, nine down, always a fun time. Hanging out with my man, Ron Nicoletti. <laughs> it's a horse for horse bet in race number eight. You'll get a reminder reminder on Twitter and by the way speaking of social media oh that's right you're yeah, up <laughs> yeah beat the expert 215 post time for the first is your cutoff so sign up at our Facebook page and uh, we'll clear the space for the man of the hour and let you let us know how you're doing if you got you're beating him let me know yeah yeah <laughs> let him know so he can use it as ammunition here on the show but we'll clear the decks the man of the hour the great Pete Aiello will be up uh, next in fact with a uh, well the first set of scratches and changes on this Twilight Friday here at Gulfstream Park.